All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to talk today about writing expressions. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about terms, unlike terms, and simplifying. We're going to talk about writing them. So the essential question today is how do I write verbal, numerical, and algebraic expressions? We're not going to worry too much about writing the verbal ones because generally how we're going to use these is we're going to take the verbal expressions and turn them into numerical and algebraic expressions because that's kind of that's kind of what story problems are all about. When you run into math in real life, you're usually given given it to you in words, and you need to translate those words, kind of like the other language, into uh, in expressions so that we can do some of the, the algebra things that we're learning with them. Okay, so we got a couple of things to define first. This first definition you've already seen, uh, so you don't need to write this in your notes again. It should already be there. Uh, but a variable. So a variable, remember, is a letter they're using to represent a value in a mathematical expression or equations. Everything we've done so far is expressions. When we get to equations, we'll talk about what makes those different, but everything we've dealt with so far has just been an expression. Okay, so it's a letter that represents a value. It stands for a number that we don't know. All right, so a verbal expression is an expression written as a word phrase. So if it uses words instead of numbers and symbols, it's a verbal expression. So two plus four, a number increased by two. Those are examples. So when we run into math in real life, we usually, this is how we usually run into it. It's in words that we have to then translate into letters and symbols. Okay, the other two types of expressions are numerical expressions and algebraic expressions. Uh, the difference between them is whether or not a variable is involved. So a numerical expression, you might recognize numerical has to do with numbers, is a mathematical phrase only contains numbers and operation symbols. So we can have plus, minus, multiply, division, and numbers, but we can't have any variables. So 60 plus 25, or 42 divided by 7, those are examples of numerical expressions. Okay, algebraic expressions, well, what algebra is all about is for is variables and solving for variables. So an algebraic expression would be one that contains a variable. So it's a mathematical phrase that contains numbers, variables, and operation symbols. It might not have a number necessarily, like you could have x plus y, for instance, would be an algebraic expression. But it will usually have a number, a letter, at least one of each, and a symbol. So some examples of that are uh, 3x plus 5 and negative 5x minus 6. All right, so let's see if we can use those definitions to sort those, sort some expressions here into what kind of expression they are. So the first one I have here is 17 plus 5 to the third. Now, I have to ask myself, is this written in words? Is it written with numbers and symbols? And does it have a variable? Okay. What's well, written with numbers and symbols? It does not have a, so it's not verbal. It does not have a variable, so it's not algebraic. So this is a numerical expression. It's just got numbers and that plus sign. Okay, so that would be an example of a numerical expression. 9 minus D. Okay, well, it's not written in words. Um, it does have numbers and it does have a minus sign, but it also has a variable. I have D in there, okay, which stands for some number that I don't know. Okay, so if I have a variable, that's algebra, so it's algebraic. Okay. So if you've ever heard your parents say, I was good at math until they started throwing letters in there, what that means is they were good at math until algebra, right? Because algebra is when we start including letters. All right, so we've got this one, 6 times 24 divided by 8 minus 5. So lots of numbers, uh, lots of different symbols, no variables. Okay, there's no letters in here. It's all numbers. So that is a numerical expression. Okay, this one, 2 plus 5, well, that is written in words. So that is a verbal expression. Okay, here, 3 plus 6, similar sentiment, but it's written with numbers and symbols. So that's numerical. Okay, a number increased by three. That's words, that's verbal. 
Okay, you might be starting to see how we're going to kind of run into these in real life, right? Or in word problems, like you might deal with something being increased by three. You should know that's going to translate to adding three. All right, x minus 12. No, no words, uh, but it does have a variable. It does have an x in there, so that's algebraic. Okay, and the last one here. 5 times x minus 4. Again, there is a variable, so that is algebraic as well. Okay. So there's some examples of verbal, numerical, and algebraic expressions. Again, our goal is going to be to take it from verbal to one of these, depending on if there is some quantity we don't know or not. Right? If there's some number we don't know, it's going to be algebraic. If we know all the numbers involved, it'll be numerical. All right, so to do this, we're going to quickly review some of the key words that we're going to look for. So you're going to want to have these in your notes. Uh, so you want to create a chart like this with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Make sure you get down these key words so you know what to look for in each case. Now, some of these, as you can tell with the first example, are going to be pretty obvious. Okay, but they won't all be. So let's get them all done so we have them all in one place. So plus, if you see the word plus in the problem, you're probably going to be adding. Decreased by is a little more subtle because you can decrease in them. You can make a number smaller by subtracting from it or dividing. Um, but in this case, if we see decreased by, that's decreased by a certain amount, that's going to indicate subtraction. Okay. The only exception to that is if it says it's like decreased by half or something. Um, that might mean division, but it will usually mean subtraction if it's decreased by a certain amount. Times is going to be multiplication. That one's probably pretty obvious. Quotient, you might have heard of. A quotient means division. So the quotient of these two numbers means to divide those two numbers. Sum means addition. Less than. Okay, again, this is another, this is another one that you can get a number less by subtracting or dividing, but this is going to apply subtracting again. So we're uh, we have a certain amount less than some other amount. So that's subtracting. I'm going to star this one because this one is going to have something in it that we're going to talk more about because it's potentially confusing. Uh, increased by, if you're increasing a number, again, you might think, well, you can increase a number by multiplying it by something. But again, increased by or increasing by a certain amount is going to generally mean addition. Product means multiplication. The product of two numbers means to multiply them. Divided by is pretty obvious. More than, just like increased by, you could think multiplication or addition. This is addition because it's a certain amount more. So we're adding a certain amount. Minus is super obvious. Multiplied by is pretty darn obvious too. And difference. Difference also means subtraction. The difference between two numbers means to subtract them. Okay, if you want to know how far apart two numbers are from each other, what the difference is between them, you can subtract them. Okay. So once you have this table down, let's move on and see if we can apply it. We're going to use it, look for these keywords as hints of what operations should be involved when we're rewriting these expressions. All right, so here's some here's an ex illustration of the fact that there's more than one way to write an expression. Okay, so all of these in each of these boxes, I have a bunch of different ways of saying something, and they all relate to the same algebraic expression. So nine more than a number, the sum of nine and a number, a number plus nine, number increased by nine, the total of x and nine. If you look at some of the keywords from your table, you'll see a bunch of them from that addition column. More than, sum, plus, increased by, total. These are all addition numbers. Okay, so those are all ways of saying x plus 9. So some unknown number plus 9. Okay, if you ever need to write, and you will need to write, expressions that represent something you don't know being increased by a certain amount, this is how that would look. Okay. The next groups all, again, saying the same thing. Four subtracted from a number, a number minus four, four less than a number, 
a number decreased by four, the difference of h and four. So here I'm using h for my variable. These are all different ways of saying h minus four. Now this one looks a little bit different because you might have noticed in some cases it lists the number first. I'm gonna highlight here. In some cases it lists the unknown number first and then four. Oh, that's not a highlighter. Hold on. Okay. So like a number minus four, a number decreased by four, the difference of H, which is my number and four. Okay. So four comes last in those cases, but we have some other cases here that I'm going to highlight a different color. Let's make this green, okay. Where it starts out with four. Four subtracted from a number, four less than a number. Okay, and this is the reason that I starred in that last slide. I started this idea less than. So there's a couple things, less than, subtracted from, um, or uh, fewer than. Uh, so there's a few, a few terms where it switches the order. So you gotta be really careful with these. Uh, if you have four subtracted from a number, it doesn't mean you're taking four and then subtracting the number. Four is the number being subtracted from this other number. Okay, so those are all ways of saying we're taking a number and subtracting four. So subtracted from is gonna change your the order of these things. Same with less than. If you want something that's four less than a number, you're not going to take four and subtract the number. Right? If I'm looking for something that's four less than a number, I subtract four from that number. Okay, an example that might be if you have a sibling who's four years younger than you, you wouldn't, and you want to know their age, you wouldn't do four minus your age. You take your age and then subtract four from it. Okay, now this wasn't an issue with addition because order doesn't matter with addition, but it does with subtraction. So be real careful when you see subtracted from or less than, that should be a cue that you're gonna flip the order. Okay, for these, we got six multiplied by G, six times the number, the product of G and six, these are all different ways of saying six G. Whenever you're multiplying a number by a letter, this is the easiest way to do it. You don't need a symbol between them. You can just put the number first and then the letter. So 6G means 6 times G. Okay, so we're going to hopefully get used to writing things that way. All right, uh, the next one, a number divided by 5, the quotient of T and 5. So it looks like we're using T for a variable. And divide a number by 5. These are all ways of saying T divided by 5. Okay, there's different ways to write that too. Okay, so lots of different ways things can come up in words that will all translate to the same expression. All right, so let's try to apply this. So I wanna do, I wanna take these, I wanna turn these into uh, algebraic or numerical expressions. It looks like all of them have at least one variable, so they're all going to be uh, algebraic. Okay. So five plus a number D. A lot of times we can just go in order and write it as it appears. Okay, so five, so five plus means I'm gonna add a number D. So some of the number we don't know what it is, we're gonna call it D. So that'd be five plus D, okay? The product means we're gonna multiply the product of what? The product of five and G. So I'm multiplying five and G together Again, the easy way to write that is do the number first, then the letter, 5G. Okay, G times 5 isn't wrong, but the easiest way to do it is going to be 5G. This will fit into what we were doing before with terms and coefficients and that kind of thing. 
So if we write it this way, then we'll be able to use that stuff we, we've learned. Okay, for this one, 11 fewer than a number F. So fewer than is hopefully raising a flag in your brain. So this is one of those that's going to reverse the order. If you think about if you want to write an expression for something that's 11 fewer than a number F, you'd have to take whatever F is and subtract 11 from it to get, a, to, get to a number that's 11 fewer. Okay, so fewer than, again, is going to switch this order. So F minus 11. It's not 11 minus F. Okay. How about this one? I got a less than. Less than is also a number that does that. If I want something that's 17 less than H, I wouldn't do 17 minus H. I'd take H, and then to get a number 17 less, I'd have to subtract 17 from it. Okay, that order matters. Okay. The quotient of 20 and T, I can just write in order. When quotient, we, we just write in order. We don't need to switch anything. The quotient of 20 and T, so 20 divided by T. Okay, so those are some of the easier ones, and a lot of your homework ones will look like this. Um, there is also a optional challenge uh, sheet that you can do if you want to try out some harder ones. We're going to try some harder ones together. So this is a pretty significant jump up. So let's see if we can handle some of these. So we'll do a couple together. Um, these might look really intimidating, but if we just go kind of one thing at a time, we should be able to do this. So sometimes we can translate these word for word. So I'll try this one. So four, it's just number, multiplied by, so I'm multiplying by something, the cube of t. So the cube of t means t cubed or to the third power. So four is being multiplied by t cubed. I don't need the symbol in between them. If it's a number and a letter, okay. If there are two numbers, obviously I need the number, the symbol between them. But if it's a number and a letter, I don't. Right? Four t, four times t is just four t. Four t cubed is reduced by five. So we're going to reduce this number by five. So we're going to subtract five from it. Okay. All right, so that's 4t cubed minus 5. Let's try another one. The sum of means we're going to be adding something. Okay, so if it says the sum of, the next things it lists should be the things that are being added together. So tan, 10 is the first thing I'm adding. And twice the square of j. So the other term is going to be twice the square of j. So that's going to require a little bit of unpacking. So twice means I'm multiplying it by 2. And the thing I'm multiplying by 2 is the square of j. So that's j to the second power. Okay, so that's 10 plus 2j squared. Okay. All right, let's try another one. So 2 divides. So this is a weird one. You won't see too often. But this is another one that kind of switches it. So if this number divides something, that means we're taking that thing and dividing by 2. So we're going to divide something by 2. Okay, so I'm going to use the kind of fraction bar way of doing that. This divided by 2. So 2 divides the difference. That means I'm subtracting something. So the difference between 8 and r raised to the fourth power. Okay, so r to the fourth power is the other thing. So it's the difference between this and this. So I'm subtracting those. Okay, the square of b added to 6, that one's not too bad. The square of b, just b to the second. Added to means I'm going to add 6. Okay, all right, let's try another couple. The cube of f is subtracted, okay, that's a little typo. The cube of x is subtracted, the cube of f is subtracted from two nights. So the cube of f would be f to the third power. I gotta look careful here. Is subtracted from. So that means the cube of f is the thing that's being subtracted. So I'm gonna be minus that. So it's subtracted from what? Subtracted from two ninths. So two ninths minus f to the third. Okay, last one. 
the cube of the total of x and 2. All right, so this one, I'm glad we got to this one. This one is a little different. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So the cube of the total of x and 2. So I'm cubing something, but I'm not cubing x. I'm not cubing 2. I'm cubing the total. Okay, that means I'm going to need to, total means add. I'm going to need to add x and 2 together first to get the total. And then that's what I'm going to cube. Okay, so there's kind of an implied parentheses here because this is telling me I need, I want to do a little different order of operations than I would normally do. I want to total these up first and then cube that total. So they got to be in parentheses so that I can do that. So x plus 2 in parentheses cubed is to the third power. Okay. All right. So if you can do these, if you get kind of what I'm doing here, then you should be fine on your homework. These are harder than most ones on your homework. But there is that extra challenge page if you think the, the other ones are easy and want to see if you can do some, some tough ones. Uh, check out that challenge page, and there are the answer, answers included to that, so you can see uh, if you're doing those right. All right, good luck.